Hi, this is Scott with Great Scott Knitting, Dyes Yarn, Episode 3. Today I'll be using Kool-Aid to dye two skeins of Knit Pick Swish DK 100% Superwash Merino Wool. The first skein I will hand paint, and the second skein I plan on dip dyeing. I have both skeins soaking in some plain room temperature water, and I have prepared the work surface by putting some plastic wrap down to protect it from the dye and so that I can wrap the dried skein in the plastic wrap to prepare it for heating in the microwave. I have removed most of the water from the skein that I am hand painting, and I have dissolved each packet of Kool-Aid in one half cup of warm water. I have black cherry for red, pink lemonade for pink, orange for orange, and lemonade for yellow. I'm going to apply the dye with the black cherry on this end, then going into the pink lemonade, the orange, and then the yellow lemonade on the other end. I am using foam brushes to apply the Kool-Aid to the skein of yarn. I'll start with the black cherry and first mark the edges where this color will go and then fill in in between those lines. This process does take a little bit of time, so I'm going to speed up the process a little bit. It's a lot of fun to do, but kind of boring to watch. With superwash wool, the Kool-Aid dye doesn't penetrate very far into the skein, so I have to flip it over to paint the back side. With the black cherry done, I'll now switch to the pink lemonade. I'm using a broader brush, which seems to work a lot better to apply the dye. With the pink lemonade done, I'll rinse that broad brush and switch to the orange. One final rinse and switching to the lemonade. One thing I'm finding is that twisting the skein makes dyeing the back a little cumbersome, so I'll just flip the entire skein to apply the dye to the back side. This time starting on the lemonade side, going through the orange, the pink, and then finally the black cherry. I have finished applying the dye to the back side of the skein of yarn. Um, looking at it, it appears that the penetration of the dye is pretty uniform in all of the different sections. So now I'm going to wrap the skein up in the plastic wrap that I had on my counter. I'm going to do this in such a way to keep the skein from bleeding the color onto the different sections. This will help keep the colorway intact. So now I'll put this bundle into a microwave safe dish and microwave it for four minutes total uh, using two two-minute increments. In between, I will check on the skein to make sure that it is heating evenly and also that it remains damp but not scorched.
The yarn has been in the microwave for a total of four minutes, so it's very hot right now. I'll just leave it right here to completely cool. Once it's um, been cooled off, then I'll unwrap it and we'll look at our final product. Now that our skein is completely cool, I will unwrap it from our plastic wrap bundle. The heat of the microwave will sometimes make it difficult to unwrap because the plastic wrap begins to stick to itself quite strongly due to the heat. But this one's coming apart relatively easily. What I'm seeing is that our uh, the dye did not bleed from the sections where we had added them. So uh, the the color sections that we created have remained intact. I'm always um, surprised by how vibrant the Kool-Aid colors can be. It's now time to rinse our skein of yarn. One of the things that comes with dyeing with Kool-Aid is not only do you have the citric acid and the dye, but you also have other things that come in the dye packet like flavorings. These are things we'll need to rinse out of our yarn. And the rinsing of the yarn will also help us know how um, color fast our dye has become due to the level of citric acid and heat that we applied. Initially, it looks like um, there's not a lot of bleeding going on as I rinse it in some cool tap water. So initially it looks pretty clear. So because there are a lot of additional things in the Kool-Aid packets, I'm going to rinse it more with a little bit of pure dish uh, or clear dish soap. And this will help um, rinse out any of the additional things that come with the Kool-Aid packet. It might bleed a little bit with the addition of soap, but I'm not expecting a lot. So I'll finish rinsing this skein of yarn, hang it to dry, and we'll look at the finished product at the end of the video. For the second skein of yarn, I will be dip dyeing a skein of Swish DK. I have about eight cups of tap water in our pan, and to that I'm going to add one packet of black cherry Kool Aid. My water is just below a simmer. And we'll let that that color dissolve into that water. I'll do a little stir here to make sure it's fully dissolved and distributed throughout our dye pot. And now I'm going to begin dip dyeing my skein of yarn, which has been soaking in some room temperature water and I'll spring out just a little bit of, of that moisture. But with it still pretty damp, I'll begin dipping. I'm going to kind of swirl it around so the fibers become open to the dye that's in the pot. And with each pass, I'm going to put it in a little bit further. The yarn that is long stays in the water longest will get the deepest color. 
and then it will lighten up as I get towards the end. And you can start to see that a lot of that color started to come out. So I'm going to push that remainder into our dye pot and um, let it sit in that color for probably about 15 minutes to allow that heat to truly set that color into our skein of yarn. After about 15 minutes, I'm going to check to see and I would say most of the color has been exhausted out of our dye pot. The water is still warm. Um, there is a simmer still going on. So um, I do want to though just check to see um, how that color is doing. And it is really great and as you can see most of the dye has been taken up into the yarn. But what I think I'm going to do is intensify the color of this skein of yarn just a bit by doing this process over again with a second packet of Kool-Aid. So I'm going to pull the yarn out of this dye pot, add another packet of black cherry, and do the dip dye one more time. With the packet of Kool-Aid dissolved in my dye pot, I'm going to take my skein of yarn and start this process again. So again, I'm going to swirl it around in that dye, allowing those colors to intensify as I do this. Now, one thing that is different in this dye pot from the first one is that the level of acid is doubled. So the yarn will take up the dye a lot faster the second time than the first time. And so with most of that pigment pulled out, I'm going to go ahead and drop the end into the dye pot to let it pick up the last of that color. What I should have in the end will be a skein of yarn that is a deep red on one end and a lighter pink on the other with a nice gradient from one to the other. So I'll let this sit for 15 minutes and then let it cool. After that 15 minutes has elapsed, I am going to check to see that most of the dye has been absorbed by the yarn. So I'm going to go ahead and cover it, turn off the heat, and set it off the burner to allow it to completely cool. Our skein of yarn is completely cool and ready to be rinsed. I just want to double check to make sure that you can see that there's no color left in that dye pot. And as I squeeze the water out, you can see that there's no bleeding that's going on initially with this skein of yarn. I'll be rinsing this skein of yarn to get rid of all of the stuff that comes with those Kool-Aid dye packs. But you can see it definitely goes from that deep red and fades into that pink. Once it's rinsed, I'll hang it to dry, and then we'll look at the final product. Here's the result of my first attempt at hand painting a skein of yarn. 
I am very pleased with how it turned out. I am still blown away with how intense the colors are that you get from simply using packets of Kool-Aid. Even the dip dye has that lovely color of moving from the dark red into that light pink. That tonal variation um, is really pleasing and I really think that these two skeins of yarn complement each other quite nicely. I look forward to using them either individually or possibly together in a project. Thank you for watching um, this episode three of Great Scott Knitting Dyes Yarn. If you like what you see, click the like thumbs up. And if you want to see more, click the subscribe button. Have a great day.